Alexa. Our guests in studio uh, from the Berkeley County Health Department. He's the happiest guy in town because he's he's a short timer. <laughs> Bill Kearns, good morning to you, buddy. Good morning. It's ironic you'd mentioned short. I feel like I'm sitting on the floor. <laughs> you're in one. You're in one of our brand new executive chairs. It's fresh off of Facebook Marketplace. <laughs> I, I told Rob I feel like I need to write a grant for Mr. Hornby to buy some chairs. These chairs get more publicity than any piece of office furniture ever known to man. I think. He spared no expense. <laughs> Bill's successor is Carol Harding, who loves sinking in a chair only slightly more than she loves being on TV. Good morning, Carol. Good morning. <laughs> Great to have you with us. Good to be here. You look happy today. I am. Yep, happy to be here. Do you feel like you're still sinking, or are you sa are you stabilized? Um, I think I'm good right now. Yeah, you've been yep. watching some Olympics. Uh, yes. Yeah, a what, what, bit. how about that Simone Biles, huh? Yeah, that's pretty much what I watched the kind of the gymnastics part. Right. Yeah. Anything I else? No, that's pretty much it. That and some beach volleyball. Watch some of that. Oh yeah, you yeah. see uh, USA yesterday uh, defeated by Canada. Yeah, yeah, but it's pretty crazy just to to watch beach volleyball. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the gymnastics uh, is, is crazy too. Yeah, oh. Considering you know, can you believe how can someone can be that you know perfect? Yeah, and, everything? and how can how can you do the things that they do? Know. How can Simone Biles at four foot eight reach twelve feet of height mm -hmm. when she's doing some of the it's amazing. tumbling that she's doing? It's, it's insane. Well, she's probably not had much of a life other than doing that gymnastics. So, when you think about it, all yeah. of them um, doing that, they've probably don't know anything but that so they're I'm very know. dedicated <laughs> that sounds yes. kind of sounds kind of sad the way you <laughs> well, <laughs> so yeah, yeah, not much yeah. of a life i'm kind of depressed now <laughs> that's it <laughs> yeah, we were feeling really great <laughs> for them until now <laughs> we just had anybody delicious. anybody have a tissue <laughs> <laughs> we just had some delicious cupcakes we were feeling pretty good and and now i'm sorry well, break hey, you down. and, and, <laughs> and to be and to be a gymnast you're probably never allowed to have a cupcake <laughs> right or, just call me debbie downer i get that you know i i would take that lifestyle to bring all that gold home that she's going to be bringing with her. Yeah, a lot of gold. Oh, yes. Yeah. 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 I cannot imagine the first time that you're told to stand here and then run as fast as you can at that pummel horse. I mean, as fast as you can, and then hit that little springboard first, and, and I, I just, I, I cannot imagine. And then, you know, go flying, like you said, 12 feet into the air, and, yeah. and, and just to try to have body control to do that, let alone do all the other acrobatic things, and then... Land plant the feet. landing. Oh, right. land on your yeah, feet. That, it's yeah. like I, not on okay. your head. Yeah. I sort of imagine it being like a wily e. coyote, wily e. coyote thing, you know, where you just go and bang. <laughs> yeah, you're done. Right into the pummel. Boom. Hey, yeah. uh, Bill, on to, on to health department well, issues here. That's why we're here, right? <laughs> <laughs> you start. Well, if you do chair. that, you're going to need the health department, right? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> By the way, what'd you At some point the, or the other. What did you think of the cupcakes there, John? You had a comment about. Uh, that. Best cupcake I've ever had. I can. I do not remember ever having a better cupcake. Sandy, thank you so much. They were carrot cake with homemade vanilla icing. Unbelievable. But the jury's still out, of course. I'm going to have to have one or two more at least just to be sure. I'll Amazing. Have to make sure Thank I get you. one before you take oh, the rest of them. Seriously. <laughs> yeah. I, I've never had a better cupcake. Unbelievable. Help yourselves. Thank Absolutely. You. Please. Uh, Bill, uh, you guys uh, in the news recently, Kara, about the expansion for the health department? Yeah, for a good reason. Yeah. For good. It seems to be a, a long time coming, and we had hit a lot of hurdles, I would say. Um, but... Uh, as you remember or may remember, we moved into the Waverly Court building uh, almost about nine years ago. And um, certainly that was a, a, a big step up. Our, our departments were uh, split between the Dunn building and, and the uh, Emmett Roush Drive office there between clinical and environmental. We were able to get under one roof, which we were excited about, but shortly understood that um, we need to plan for the future of Berkeley County with our continual increase in population we need to make sure that the health department can take care of the community as they deserve so um, I guess about five years ago we we started looking and and trying to make some plans and certainly saving up all of our nickels and dimes and dollars and and to to look about getting a, an expansion in our building 
um, one of the big things, the hurdles that we had right off the bat is we needed to try to be able to figure out how we can protect the confidentiality of uh, individuals that come into the health department. We have a one centralized lobby. Um, so when, when uh, patients or clients are coming into the health department, um, they're sharing the same lobby with environmental and the clinical side. And not, not a good scenario to have. So um, with this building expansion, that will uh, correct that 100%. Um, so we, uh, we, we started off plans and then COVID hit mm -hmm. and it put a damper on things. Um, all of our attention and direction was towards addressing COVID. And it made your department very popular. S with some people. <laughs> 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 we didn't always gain a lot of friends, but we took care of the community as we're, as we're charged with. So we, uh, continued on and not losing sight of the fact that we did need to do an expansion to address the future. And um, so our bid, um, the, our cost estimate for the building increased about a half a million dollars wow. between where it was pre-COVID to where it is now. Inflation. Absolutely. Um, so What did it wind up as? Uh, almost $2 million for a 4,000 square foot addition to the building which will house our environmental health department and, and uh, some of the other departments, but um, uh, about almost $2 million. And that contract and, and all the all that legwork of, of doing putting out bids and everything, I have to give the county commission a lot of appreciation because they worked um, with that and getting those bids out there. And it had to have it a couple different times because the rules changed a little bit as far as how we were going to bid it out. Um, but it was placed out for bid. It was won by Lance Construction. Um, and so this week, um, we have construction going on at the health department at 122 Waverly Court. So it's pretty exciting. Mm -hmm. how, exciting. how long is the construction going to take? Um, the, the construction project is in contract should be completed by April next year. Very nice. That's not long at all. Seems like it is, though. How important was this bill for you to get done before your ultimate retirement date there? It was my desire um, to try to get this in, in place um, prior to just because it's been a project. And, and um, even with moving to the, uh, the, the 122 Waverly where we're at now for the building moving out of our other two, that was a, it, it was a goal. And we all set goals, and so this was the one to try to get it done before I retired. But um, thankfully, the the board's still going to retain me as a CFO as Kara takes total reins of the rest of the of the projects. But um, I'll still have my hands in there until we get this building completed, and then some afterwards. But you know, it, you'll have his hands in. It. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> it's it, it's it, yeah, it's it's a team team approach, and uh, Kara and I work very well together. I have total confidence in her abilities she's already shown them time and time again of course she um, got the since, job right yeah absolutely since she was appointed on april fool's day um <laughs> so <laughs> it's uh but i'm i'm looking forward to seeing it, the different stages even smallest of things of seeing um some fencing put up and some buildings moved yesterday a lot of things have to happen um, which is why you have a great architect which we have with crabtree aurora and associates um they were the contract or the architects for it and, and the construction crew it's just great seeing everything coming into play and i'm going to be looking forward to that Kara, what's the challenges facing you as you take this project over uh i don't know just hoping to do everything right um like i said we're excited uh i'm learning as we go transitioning out of you know just doing environmental i need to uh, get my feet um wet and cl learning clinical services and things like that but I think this uh, new build will be amazing for us. Um, In what way? Uh, just because, as you guys can see, the county is growing leaps and bounds, both uh, with the building and also every day uh, new restaurants are opening. And it, it's wonderful because mainly for our sanitarians, they're all going to have their own offices finally. And that is something over the last 20 plus years they've never had uh, we including myself all shared uh, an office pretty much four to five sanitarians and this will allow them to have their own space uh, you know and and that means a lot and the nurses like I said will 
uh, they do have all, always have had theirs, but they'll have their their offices as well. So once again, it comes back to that confidentiality, and you know there are things that sanitarians as well as nurses deal with that uh, they need to have private conversations, and you know so it's really a great thing to give our staff to be able to have something like that. And I think they're all very excited to see what happened yesterday. I know I am uh, because I was starting to wonder if it was ever going to happen, and um, you know. I was on vacation when the first dirt uh, got to be moved, but I was excited to see that because that's what we had been waiting on for so long. And uh, to to see it happening, um, you know, like I said, going from when I first started, I worked at Emmett Roush Drive mm-hmm. um, and then I, the, the Dunn Building and Waverly Court and to see it where uh, we're moving and, you know, we can add staff and continue to grow because what are we, the second growing county we're like almost soon to be number one um, with population in the state so we're going to need to add to our our uh, staff and we want to do more me personally some outreach letting people know what we do a lot of people don't realize what we do at the health department so one of the things that I want to do is let people know what services we have and hopefully grow those services in the in the last couple years post-covid are there any new services that you guys are now providing? Are there are there new things coming down the road, advancements in, in public health? Uh, I, th- I think probably the biggest part of that may be in the clinical service area. Um, we it was it was right before COVID. We were transitioning into it anyway, but we actually can see um, patients, clients through our clinical program whether they have insurance or don't have insurance. So we do bill all major insurance um, companies so we can see them. We have we, we provide full service um, GYN services as well as immunizations for children, infants, adults, um, any number of different clinical services, um, lots of counseling. Um, we do TB control. Um, uh, we, we diagnose um, STDs, treat. Um, the the health department as well as everything that the environmental health does that people are not they just think maybe they just do restaurant inspections and septics but it goes well beyond that we have a full-time epidemiologist that does disease tracking within our counties Um, the health department is busy and um, we see thousands of people every year and that didn't even count what we how many thousands we saw during COVID with all the case reporting and tracking and and um, so one of the, one of the big obstacles I kind of add on to what Kara was saying when, with this renovation for the health department is we're still going to be open for business and, right um, so trying to even have some renovations with the existing building and still maintain active clinics uh, maintain active services for the environmental health and have construction going on at the same time is going to be difficult. Um, there's going to be some evenings and weekends um, work by the contractors to keep so we can have the health department open. Well, I, I tell you, I've been in the in the county 28 years. It was roughly 50,000 when I got here. We're heading toward 140. Mm-hmm. But every time I talk to you guys, like she said, getting out and letting people know what you guys do there, every time I hear about the health department, I'm learning some other part of our community that you that you guys are part of to keep us safe. Mm-hmm. I mean, it's great. I mean. People don't, they see the immunizations, they see the work, of course, that you do with the, the substance abuse help, but they don't see a lot of the envir- the environmental stuff. I didn't know anything about that. Right. Can, you, can you go a little farther into some of the other stuff you do with that? Um, so a sanitarian is responsible for about 20 different programs when they go through training school. So that's what they need to know. And even as long as I've been doing it, we learn things all the time. So... Um, I still refer to myself as a sanitarian. I'm sorry, you'll have to excuse me. I mean, I still am, but, you know, after 20-plus years of doing it. But, you know, so they're out. They're inspecting child care centers. They're inspecting uh, daycares and private home where they have 7 to 12 children. We do recreational water. So uh, also, like, for instance, a new gym that just opened, we're in there inspecting the pool and the spa. Uh, You know, we're checking the shower facilities, making sure there's hot water. We we go in there on those type of things. Bill mentioned um, we have an epidemiologist that does disease investigation, but sometimes sanitarians do foodborne illness investigation, uh, animal bites. Uh, So last year um, 
we now have someone that is helping with that and actually she's taken over that program we had over 600 animal bites um, last year alone and so sanitarians needed help because every single one of those has to be investigated fully because of the risk of rabies wow when you say animal bite yes we're not talking like a dog bite we're talking some wild animal um some any type of animal yes um you know so warm-blooded of course uh cat dog but we get some random ones that get sent to us that shouldn't like snake bites mm -hmm. oh yeah yeah. Um, bats you get bitten by bats. bat bites well bats generally uh a lot of times uh people don't even realize that they've been bitten by a bat so really? if someone finds a bat in their home in their room where they're sleeping we go ahead and refer them to consider post exposure because there's no way to guarantee that the bat did not have any contact with them while they're sleeping so you know Jeez, a lot that of, makes us feel good yeah <laughs> thank right? you Vampire so <laughs> we will test the bat of course um you know we'll uh, euthanize it uh you, you know, test it before you euthanize or after you after, <laughs> after. Okay. after. reading comprehension <laughs> math skills <laughs> or, uh, <laughs> test the brain <laughs> oh yes sorry. they test the brain <laughs> no, so uh they uh that gets sent off and that is something small enough that they can test but yeah i mean we we are seeing more uh rabies uh in the eastern panhandle some data just came out and you know primarily it's um in uh, cats or skunks or raccoons Raccoon. haven't had any cases of dogs um uh, bill, I, bill told me Kara, that there are many cases that are coming about because people are trying to domesticate wild animals like squirrels and possums and groundhogs and such Raccoons. Raccoons. Is this actually happening? They're wanting to play with the wildlife, and they need to leave the wildlife Well, they want to alone. save the wildlife is where it starts. Mm -hmm. And then they, then they get concerned because they start reading information about rabies, and then they realize the only way that they can find out their risk is to euthanize the animal that they have now domesticated mm -hmm. into a pet. And when they find out how it has to, you know, it's euthanized and what happens to it afterwards to be sent off to being tested, it's it's – very you know um, do you have to be bitten to get rabies or can you get it another way as well um it comes from saliva so uh, contact with the saliva to a mucous membrane if you have an open cut or uh, anything under your nails there that would be open it's the saliva getting into the that area oh. say your eyes or anything like that but bite scratch is the most uh no, you know, known as far as that's concerned. And, you know, I'm really surprised, and, and I hate to say this, that more people don't come in contact with it because of the fact that they do want to, you know, um, help the wildlife. I mean, it's hard to see something like that and not want to, but uh, especially yeah. uh, there's a lot of cat colonies, and, you know, that's a, a, another sad thing in itself because it only takes one feral cat to affect the whole colony. And, you know, then people are feeding them and, you know, that it, it, it happens. But, you know, like I said, it, it, it's another program. And, and when you think about 600 cases, every time someone comes in contact, even with their own dog, it has to be investigated. So if, you know, you talk about puppies, if the puppy bites or scratches you and you go and you seek medical care, they're going to contact the health department within 24 hours, it's reportable. And then we will contact the victim um, you know, check in for a puppy. Of course, it probably hasn't been vaccinated against rabies if it's under six months. So then uh, you're going to um, just have to watch. Uh, it, it's required to be in quarantine for 10 days to make sure that it doesn't pass away because an animal only passes away rabies in the last 10 days of its life. And I think it's important what yeah. Carrie just said about having your animals vaccinated. Right. Um, at the earliest age get them vaccinated and keep them vaccinated because you never know when your lab's going to run off to the neighborhood. Mm -hmm. Wow. Maybe get him a space. He had to, Bill had to go. He had to go there, yeah. Matt. Man. Get that traveling oh. salesman there. Oh. No, it's, never, never imagined, right? right you, exactly. Those things that, yeah, you just you don't think about. You raise them right and you never You teach know. them, yep, yeah, but then they, they go out on their own. And well, so. you know, and, and it, it could just be a simple case of, your dog's outside, you've let the, the vaccination lapse a month, and there happens to be a skunk in the right. backyard. The dog tangles with it. The skunk is tested and has rabies. And What do you all know about my you know, life? My dogs I, have tangled I, with two different yeah. skunks, but the skunk always wins <laughs> yeah. because the, they yeah. get sprayed, and 
the skunk runs off, and then I have to clean a dog. Yeah, there's been a lot of that <laughs> recently, people I know. And, Buying a and, lot of tomato juice, aren't you? Mm-hmm. Let, what's the best way to handle? Let me ask this question because I had this happen within the last three months. I'm trying to think how long ago it was where I, I came out one morning. I, I was getting ready to go somewhere, and about um, two driveways down from us, there is a car in the road with four-way flashers on, and I couldn't see through a little bush, so I'm thinking, okay, someone had in car trouble I'll go say hi and as I went down there is a raccoon laying in the road and so the gentleman pulls forward as he sees me and he says man I don't know what's up but that raccoon is acting funky he thought it may have been hit or something anyway he slowed down it was just acting really weird so it was early enough in the morning I want to say it was like six so it was like who do we call and and so like how if you see an animal that's like that acting weird or different how do you kind of respond what do you do pretty much uh the best agency to call is uh dnr okay um give them a call because they have officers that can come out i mean of course if you live in an area where you uh, and you own a firearm you could uh of course shoot the animal because obviously one if it was hit it needs to be put out of its misery but if it is acting aggressive or in a drunken right. state it is a uh, probably pretty probable that it does have rabies well now. that was the thing there were no signs of 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 the animal being hit that's one thing the driver said i didn't get down too close but he said there, there was no blood there were no marks no tire tracks anything that made you think that's why he said he kind of stopped. It was like this thing's just laying in the middle of the road. And so. And we do get those calls. And we refer them to, you know, because we cannot come out and, and get the animal. Mm-hmm. Animal control will not come out on a case like that. Um, but like I said, uh, they'll come out. And, you know, like I said, even if you shoot it yourself, uh, and this is you know, sad to say, but you don't want to shoot the animal in the head. And that reason is if you want it tested, we will test it at the health department. Uh, but if you uh, do that, as Bill mentioned, the brain is what's tested. So if you shoot the animal that way, we can't test it. So you would never know. Um, we are but, just a boot out of time. So uh, we always get talking about rabies. That puts me off. I <laughs> have no aim. Is good. Yeah, yeah. yeah rabies, rabies always ends the show. Or mayonnaise. And if the, and if the <laughs> mayonnaise, it's only been out too long in the I summer. I didn't even get to the other like sixteen programs <laughs> yes. or whatever. But you know. In, in all seriousness, I do have like exactly thirty seconds. Uh, school starts soon. How do you get in touch to make an immunization uh, appointment, uh, Bill? Best thing to do is call the health department three zero four two six three five one three one. Clinical side is extension one. Did I get that in 30 seconds? You did. I'm very practicing. Very happy with you right now. And you now you get a cupcake, Bill. Yeah, I get a cupcake. Or two. Yeah. Right. Carrie, you can have one uh, yourself. Yeah. Hey, thanks for coming in. Hey, thanks, thanks for inviting for us. Me. It's uh, almost uh, time for Shane Shadows, uh, by the way. Shane is uh, putting on a big show this weekend at the Berkeley County Youth Fair for wrestling. 